Hey guys, this is Steve Kumir from the JVPM team and in this video I will show you a new feature we've added to the JVPM 5 designer uh, which is the ability to not only model your business processes but also be able to simulate them and view simulation results. This is a brand new feature, it is still experimental and things are subject to change um, but I wanted to show you what we have currently and what is available. Now the simulation has two parts. We first developed a simulation engine, which is of course based on JVPM5, and also we have added tooling support in Designer, as you will see here. Um, first, let's take a look at what we've added on the UI. You will notice on top we have two tabs. One is the process modeling tab, and you also have a new simulation results tab, where after running the simulation you can view your results. And also we have something you call simulation parameters. Now we're doing numeric simulation, so you as a user have the ability not to only enter um, your modeling parameters for your, your process model, but now you can also add simulation parameters um, or parameters that, that uh, guide the simulation and then make decisions during the simulation. So one of the things like on the process level we have is something called base currency which is used as currency for all the cost per simulation parameters. Um, then we have for sequence flows we have probability which is the probability that at this point uh, we split so there's 30% chance that we'll get to the approved task and there is a 70% chance to get to the reject task. On the task level we have resource uh, simulation parameters, cost parameters, time parameters, things like that. These are the currently the distribution types um, that that uh, we support. Um, and of course we're based of, on standards. So for modeling we use, as you guys know, the BPMN2 standard is specification. But for simulation we also use the business process simulation spe specification which is um, driven by the Business Process Simulation Working Group. And here is their website. Um, you should start getting familiar with it. it is, we still use the early uh, releases of the specification. We're also um, contributing to it. And as the specification improves, and, and, and um, we are also improving our, both on our simulation engine side as well as um, the tooling side. So. All right, so let's take a look. We have a simple business process here. We have a script task, um, XOR gateway, which splits into two human tasks, and this is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and uh, simulate this process. Um, we still have the process uh, uh, pathfinder that is still there, but we have added a new um, ability now here to actually run the simulation. So let's go ahead and click that. When you click that, you have to enter in the number of instances of this process you would like to simulate. So let's, you know, just do 10 for now for this demo. And you have to enter in an interval, which is the amount of time in between each of the um, process instance simulations. So in this case, you know, let's do five you know, minutes is fine. You have other options as well. So let's go ahead and run the simulation. When you run the simulation, designer will switch you to the simulation results tab and default you to the process um, results. If you see on the right side here, our simulation, you have a number of different simulation graphs that you can view. Uh, they represent the results of your simulation. Uh, they're divided on process, the activities, and your um, process paths. So let's take a look first uh, um, at the uh, process graphs. Here you have, for example, the execution times of the simulation. Uh, you have a chart here representing the max, min, and average execution time. Here average is 18.8 .8, um, minutes. And the second chart we have is the activity instances. So for each of the activity or a task in your business process, you will see how many times it has been executed during the simulation. So we see that the run script here has been executed 10 times, approve has been executed 3, and a reject human task has been executed 7 times. Now you have a number of different uh, charts, different charts that you can represent this data with. So for example, by default, 
you have a vertical bar chart, you can switch to a horizontal um, bar chart. You can also uh, view this information as pie charts, where you can, for example, just view um, certain data or you can filter it. Now, another thing is, of course, you can view this information as table as well. Um, and now you also have something called a timeline. So let's look at that. Um, on this timeline, you will see on the bottom, here is the timeline, which shows each of the individual events that happen during our process simulation. And here you see a chart which shows our process execution times at the time a certain event happens. So at the beginning, of course, we have no data. But as we move throughout the timeline, and you move by clicking on these arrows on the right and left side, and underneath this arrow, you see exactly the time to milliseconds of when the, the event happened. So let's start going through a timeline. We still have no data as we're wrapping up the simulation. And here we go. Um, we're starting to see some data. And we're going through our individual events. Right now, we're recording uh, end tasks, um, end events, and also any type of tasks in our business process. So as we add more data to other types of nodes, such as start or gateways and things like that, we will add them to the timeline as well. So you as a user, you can click back and forth throughout the timeline and actually see um, our process max, min, and average um, execution times of this process. Another thing that you can do, you can view this information represented here as a line chart. So here we see, for example, um, throughout our simulation time, which took about 14 minutes here, um, that our max, min, and average um, process execution time, and you can see different values at certain times. And you can also filter as well. For example, we just want to see the max and how it wraps up over simulation. So that is it for the process uh, chart results. So let's take a look at activities. Under activities, we have all of our activities of our, our models, which are the two human tasks and our script task here. So we can view results for each. So for human tasks, we have three different um, charts. First one is the max, min, and average execution time of this particular human task. And you can also, you know, here filter that as well. And also you have re our resource utilization, which is the percentage of the resource utilization that this particular human task had. And we also can see uh, uh, cost parameters. So if you've entered in um, a particular cost simulation parameters, you can see the results here as well. And of course, you can see that as, as um, charts as well as um, table format. Same thing for other um, human tasks. And let's take a look at uh, a script task. So these are tasks that are not hu uh, human tasks. You see just execution times. And you can, of course, see the same information in different formats as well. The last thing we're going to take a look at is the path results. During the process simulation, um, our simulation runtime is uh, found all possible paths um, that can be taken in our business model. And these are represented here. So we have two possible paths. So let's take a look here. And here we see the path that this particular one, this particular path. And underneath we see the path instance execution. So during our process simulation, our, this particular path was executed three times. And all other paths were executed seven times. If we go ahead and click on path two. This is our other path that we have. And this particular path was executed seven times and all other paths were executed three times. So that kind of gives you an idea of, of, of um, what really happened during um, the simulation. And also, of course, you have a table display for this as well. 
Now, one last thing I wanted to show you is visual validation, um, which also now includes some val validation on your simulation um, parameters. So one of the things that's important, once if you have outgoing sequence flow from a gateway, for example, the total sum of percentage of the outgoing sequence flow should always add up to 100. So in this case, we have 70% here probability to go to the reject human task and 30 uh, to go to the approved human test. Now, if I change this, for example, to 50, um, we will have a 120% uh, uh, chance, you know, which is over 100. And in this case, we do get, um, should be right here. Okay, the sum of probability values of all outgoing sequence will must be 100. So let's change that back then to 30. And go ahead. Um, that is what we currently have. Um, we are still adding new features to it. One of the things is um, a, a replay capability. So on, on, on the time chart level, instead of seeing the process execution time chart, you will be able to see things like the, your actual process model annotated at that particular event, the node of the event, such as, for example, the reject task. Uh, we're adding like play button here so you can, you know, play through and stuff like that. Um, and uh, adding just overall usability, like new information, new charts, things like that. Um, it's important that we get uh, our community involved with this and we would like to do that and get your user input. So if you like this video and you would like to get involved, you know, post, uh, send a post on, on, on this blog or contact us on IRC or the JVPM mailing list, uh, user mailing list or the JVPM forum. And I uh, hope to hear from you guys and, uh, you know, let us know what you think. Thanks a lot.